The Whiskey Brothers. You just drank 190 proof moonshine, and you think it tasted good. Yeah, it tasted good to me. Once I got past the initial assault. No, see, this is... <laughs> yeah, you know this is, when you drink a, But I took a big old drink. Like, I went into it like the way I drink, you know? Yeah, and exactly. And he handed me the flask, and I was like... And they were all watching me, and I knew they were looking for a reaction. And I was like, all right. And I I hammered a slug back, uh-huh. you know what I mean? I filled the mouth pole up. And I, and I was like... Oh! Yeah. And some of it went down my esophagus, and my esophagus went... Oh! You make a fire engine face. And then I got it in there, and my face did turn red as fuck. Yeah, fire right? engine. But it the horns tasted coming good out on ears. my tongue afterwards. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's That's something nice. you tell yourself. That's you telling yourself you like the song that was playing when you were, you know? It, <laughs> no, no, dude. It's like when you drink a shitty, fucking really hoppy IPA, and that first that first sip, you're like, that, that, that. But then by the bottom of it, your mouth is okay. You just did all that alcohol in one, in one shot. shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. You did so a, you, you're not tasting anything. Because I was talking, I was like, you can really taste the corn in that. No, you you're going to tell me you time lapse the drink. That's not. Yeah, you burn your fucking taste buds off with the first <laughs> drop, and everything tastes great. I which don't. which was all fine and good. Uh, about forty five minutes to an hour later, I felt it go into my stomach. I felt it enter my digestive system. Oh, the system. elevator got to the bottom floor. Yeah, I was like standing there. Me and my kid were like joking and singing around, and I was like, "Whoa, that was hot!" Oh. Oh, God, what the hell? <laughs> Why is my stomach so hot? It's like the Carolina yeah, goes, Reaper oh, he challenge. Goes, he goes, you feel it when he goes into your system. I was like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Why are my arms red? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I read it up like a full-blown Irishman, just you, like I'd been out in the sun for 20 You go minutes. take a shit. It's, out, it's sitting in the toilet smoking a cigarette. Just like, what the fuck did you do? Oh, that all came immediate, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, it came I time bet. for that. Well, Nate. That's- in Colorado, thank you for the wonderful bottle of Stranahan's that's making this. Uh, have, have you ever? I will. I'll, let's talk about that a little bit. Have you ever had a flavor like take you back, like like on a true nostalgia level, like mm. just like really? I was in my cousin's home, and her mother was a caterer, and she was head of the 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 college nutritional program and everything. Mm. She was quite an accomplished chef. And she cooked everything for everything at our family events our whole life, and it was amazing. My Aunt Barbara's food was insanely amazing. Chicken dumplings to chocolate pie, whatever you wanted. That's it. And her daughter cooked some of her recipes for my visit. And, bro, when I bit in these chicken and dumplings, it was like being back in the Pentecostal church and nine years old again. Like, oh. the flavor was so, like, Every I felt ingredient. like I was at my Aunt Barbara's house again. Like, I was like, how is that possible? How can that be that strong of a mental tie-in to a flavor? If you put X ingredients together in a pot 30 years later, they it can cook mean it the this exact way same for this thing. Long and, yeah. It creates those chemicals. Yeah, man. That's some uh, time travel shit right there. It was amazing. Man. I don't have I we, we didn't nobody cooked around me, so it was either I don't have any eggs and wiener memories, but the uh grape snow cones. Yeah. That's what I re- that I am immediately there's still a place. I'll still go walk down and get one every now and the again. The Raspa. The Raspa. And it it reminds me of I spent so much time at this little league park. We, I mean, every because every one of my brothers played ball, so we had we were five nights a week, half the year, and me and grape snow cones. That's what I did. I read comic books and read and <laughs> drank grape snow cones. That's what. And to the, I will still stop at a Sonic. It, it is something about that purple syrup yeah. that if you give it to me, I'm instantly right. I'm daydreaming. And, I always like the bubble gum ones because they usually had a piece of gum at the bottom too. Uh, but that would crack your tooth because yeah, it was yeah, all it was frozen. Yeah. yeah, I use yeah that and the frozen toe yeah, ice so cream. That gumball. We'll, we'll the, load load the, the other load downside, load. the other downside of that gumball at the bottom of the thing was when it got all whatever, you couldn't bite the bottom of the cone off and drip it like a cow's titty into your mouth because that's how I used to get the bottom because yeah, the yeah, ice would the be syrup. all, but you could squeeze around and you couldn't do it with that stupid gumball in there. It was like a stopper, like yeah. a ballpoint yeah, pen yeah, yeah, yeah. of of, of <laughs> deliciousness. Yeah, I still like gumballs from like when I was a kid, those old gumballs. So I yeah. take them on the road with me and I'll just chew them up and I just swallow them, whatever. I don't care. They're delicious. Yeah. And uh, Will Load was riding me and I was just eating gumballs. And he's like, man, I, f- I feel like this is a comment on your intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, I know. We'll be in seven years. I don't years. know what the comment is. <laughs> so, I, one thing, I like, remember when you were a kid, you got a gumball and like, if you got that thing at 2 o'clock in the morning, when you went to bed, you were still chewing that gum. Mm-hmm. But I got older. Like, second it loses its flavor, window down, poof. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I'm just grabbing it. None of it keeps its flavor anymore at no, all. It doesn't ever. seem but like. It, but you're 100% right. Your grown-up ability plus dopamine of more and more and more. Like when I was a kid, I used to get the gum specifically at the ballpark. That's where I would spend all my lawnmower money now that I come to think about it. They used to sell those five packs of gum. They would be the big balls, like rainbow or something. So there would be a purple, a red, an orange, but then there would be that speckly ball. Yeah, that speckled, the green, whatever and, that, there was the a green, green one, and yellowish speckly one. Whatever the speckly ones, there was an orange and reddy speckly. Yeah. Whatever those were, they were so good. And I would get those and I would chew on, man, I would eat like half of one and chew on that for a while. And then I'd go to a different flavor. That was a delicacy that would last me probably a day or two. I would take it home, tuck it under the pillow. Sometimes, you know, now oh, I put mine in the fridge on a piece of paper, whatever. You, oh, <laughs> you would pull it back I'm bedpost or whatever. Now I, there would be days where I found myself driving home. You'd be on that stretch of 45. You stop at Bucky's or something. You go in, you get whatever else you get. But I'll buy like a pack of that gum, and I'll be two X's up the road. I will already, poop yeah, yeah, and chunked it, poop. and then thrown it with it, and then it comes back in through the window. You got to ah oh, fuck shit, get that back <laughs> out. But you just suck all the juice out because you're a grown up who can walk right back in with another dollar. Yep, and get you five more, more dollars. <laughs> Deliciousness. Yep, that's yeah, the thing. I always like stopping at Woody's place. I get those, a, yeah. and I get the. Uh, I have a. I don't like dark chocolate, but I love dark chocolate covered almonds. That is like my favorite little treat because I don't eat like candy or anything anymore. But those dark and those aren't really that bad for you because both y'all, got, both y'all get with your good ass eating habits and your drinking habits and you're working out <laughs> and you're healthy. No, I buy working almonds dusted in the cocoa powder, just like raw oh, straight yeah, cocoa yeah, powder. Those are good. Fuck the co- fuck the chocolate cover. I just want that the cocoa powder because mm-hmm. that's actually really good for your system. Mm-hmm. And but I don't feel like it is. You know what I mean? I'm sitting no, there chewing on like it. I'm like chewing up candy. candy, motherfucker. But that, I'm like fiber protein. Yeah, yeah. The dark chocolate okay. almonds. Me, it's like my replacement for peanut M and M's. Yes, sir. <laughs> Those were a hard one. I had to let go of when I had to put down chocolate here for this stretch. Oh and, yeah. Uh, peanut M. Bro, I was like, that's my favorite. But here's the thing: I realized that I might not really be as sensitive to some of these things because. Maybe I maybe just if you eat a three pound bag in an afternoon like that would fuck yeah. anybody up, right? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. Not really. And, and maybe you had to cut a bunch of stuff out to kind of get to the root of what the problem. Exactly. I had to do all Bro, that with Chrome. My shit right now is fucking Halo Top ice cream. Halo Top. Wait, what is that? I haven't had that. Halo Top ice cream. It's a healthy ice cream, and the shit's good. And they got a bunch of different flavors. Uh, there's like if you get a pint of it, there's 18 grams of protein in the pint. But only 300 calories. Oh, nice. And like a pint of Ben and Jerry. Good? Is it a steak? It's fucking amazing. Like a pint of Ben and Jerry is like 1,400 calories. Yeah. This and bitch 30 is 300 bucks. calories. And uh, dude, I get these motherfuckers. That's that's my treat after the gym because nice. I'm playing fitness. They're open 24 hours. So I go like 10 o'clock. I come back. I jump in the shower. Pop on Netflix, and I'm just like, where's my pint of ice cream? And I'll just sit there and devour it, guilt-free like a motherfucker. I, I don't like, care. I like to I'm go like, this is the, only 300 uh, calories. I go in the afternoon because there's like, between like 12 and 1 o'clock, there's not a lot of people there. You know. Oh, noon, noon to right about 3.30. 4 o'clock, they start pouring in. Yeah. Uh, 4 to 8, don't go. Mm. Don't go. You can't get on anything. And no, I, oh, I swear to watching God. Watching okay. the squat girls do one set of squats and then play on their phone for 30 That's minutes the problem. at the Wilson Dude, machine. I don't give a fuck if you're actually doing your shit. I don't give a fuck if you're taping yourself. Yeah. But these annoying dudes and fucking girls who the bench is the bench where the free weights is yeah. that's the one that gets me these bitches just sitting there texting and facetiming and what and there's a lot of motherfuckers Wait, like hey can, I, can I get bench. that bitch yeah. whatever oh my God. how long do you think i would make it in a gym well if dude, you I, went at the right time you'd be fine no yeah. but at five at six thirty no you're on, gonna turn on, around and walk out I, you're gonna I, turn around I, and walk I, out. I wouldn't let you i wouldn't even let you go. i have accidentally <laughs> gone there I, I let my day get away from me and i went <coughs> about 4.30, and I knew I was playing with fire. And I waited 15 minutes to get a Wilson machine, and then another 15 minutes to get to the free weights. Which one's that the Wilson machine, a, the volleyball? It, uh, it's the what, squat, right? Uh, it's got the tracks. For, like, doing squats and bench press. You can bench press on it, yeah. Uh, and then it was, like, another 15, 20 minutes to get on the free weights, and, like, my heart rate was down. Like, this was That's like going to Disneyland you know? on a weekend. Yeah, it was terrible. You got to wait in all the so lines. I don't, I don't Can go. you get a fast pass where you don't have, like, is there, like a, <laughs> is there a bench where you don't set up your phone that's, <laughs> like, <laughs> no? why does not. no one open that gym where every machine is in duplicate, one is for people with phones, 
and one is for people with lives. <laughs> well, they're so they, they Planet Fitness are huge. There's millions of these. They, they, there's 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 machines all over the place. There's they a will lot of still people all at be full. Times. And for the longest time, like okay, cool. I don't You're care if there's people bench. there. You know what bothers me is the 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 two acres of treadmills are never full. Can we throw half of those out and get some more weights? Thank you. <laughs> uh, and, they, and they won't do free weights because they're like, that intimidates people because people who go really heavy do free weights or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? Do you, are we going to get in shape or not? Um, and eventually you get to the point where you can actually work out to where you can outgrow a plant fitness because they – some of the machines, like you, you have the pin that puts in the way. They have taken out some of the lower plates, so you can't even like if you want a leg press over three hundred pounds, you're fucked because those uh, lower plates aren't there because that will intimidate people because of the big jocks who come in. Well, my goal to come here is to become one of them, you know. Uh, yeah, I've maxed out the seated leg curl machine. I can't. That's that's why I'm on the incline leg press is because yeah. they can't stop me on there because of the plates. Yeah. Um, but but so for for the longest I would go in and if you're just sitting there on the bench doing your thing with your phone or whatever, hey man, I got a I got a few different things I want to hit. I'll go and I'll hit this instead, and then I'll come back. What there was one I had three different machines, and this chick was still just sitting there on her phone. And I'm I don't go up, I I never talk to women at the gym because mm. it's like you say hi, they scream rape. That's how um, allegations happen. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but this one I just I walked over and I just grabbed two dumbbells and i didn't say anything i just walked over stood in front of her and looked down at her and her phone mm -hmm. and when she finally looked up i was like hey you done with that and she goes no i still got something to do i was like no nah, i think you're done <laughs> and she got up and walked away and i was like okay cool and i was like if this is my last time at this planet fitness that's cool there's another one one mile up the road i try not to i so that's why i always have people go man i won't come work out with you or come work out at my gym when you're in town like I like to work out by myself. I do I not. Like to be left I do alone. not play well with others. Mm. No, I just want. I put my earpods in. So and wait, I what's, go do the work I need to do on me? What's best practice? What are the rules of engagement when someone's just fucking off on a bench with their phone? The rule is you wait. Yeah, I just if wait they on got somebody the who has first, some sense and finishes and theirs the set. For and how long? What's is there like a half hour rule? Now on the on the wall they say there is a half hour rule, um, but you. But you, where I. It's a because they also have that thing about no cursing and grunting or whatever you know because right. we're trying to eliminate that kind of behavior. Right. Yeah. But I go to the Planet Fitness on the north side, so it's just it's just me and a bunch of abuelas and uh, a, a lot of really big black dudes who work out all the time. Right. And I cuss in there and know it, the abuelas laugh and nobody gives a shit. You know, I've overdone it on the butterfly machine, but like. And all the dudes start laughing, that boy is laughing. Right. Nobody gives a shit. You know what I mean? Like, so, so, all right. I don't know how well they follow those rules because they have all those rules on the wall, but. I'm going to one up north now, but when I first got my membership, I was going to Planet Fitness on Fondren. <laughs> and, bruh, those rules were polite suggestions. Yeah, yeah. Because it was. You know how, like, when when you and I show up at a punk show and it's me in a sea of white? Uh-huh. Uh, the Fondren Planet Fitness, I am the whitest thing there. <laughs> uh, dude, it is just... But you know what? I, and, and, dude, this is my one thing. I miss that gym because how you say, like, you know, headphones in, work on me. I, every time I've had somebody like, hey, man, let's go work out together, it happens once, and then I won't go with that person anymore. Because no matter what, whenever you go work out with a partner, it's like, okay, cool, well, I'm going to hit, and I'm going to do this. The second you start working out, every one of them goes, oh, bro, you should do that like this. And yeah. it, no matter what you're doing, uh, you You should work wrong. out with me. I don't know how to do shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you want that, then cool. But I don't want that. I'm like, look at me, bro. What I'm doing is working. I did, and I did all this that's, without you. That's the. I get so tired of that. Like when I post, I'll post those videos and stuff. Like I'm not looking for advice, bro. I worked with a coach who's helped me set up a program that works for me, and what I'm doing is working. It's, it may not be working as fast as everybody wants it. I'm not dropping weight like somebody that had gastric bypass. But I feel fucking great, bro. Yes, I got a I program feel, on future. I ran around outside in the woods this week. I ran right. for fun. For fun. Just for 
Just for it thought it sounded like a good idea to take off fucking running through the woods. What was this guy when we were walking around DC? Yeah, yeah. So he, he was not alive yet. He this guy was not uh born into who I've become. Gee. Bro, I ran through the woods for fun. So like, just nothing was chasing me. Nothing. If you skip, it's over. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> bro, so I'm ready. Is, if I catch you frolicking, bro, <laughs> look, there's a couple of verbs. You can run, but you skip or frolic. I can tell because I'm like this year, like this is a silly like homeowner type thing, but or dad no thing. But <laughs> this year, like for spring, my yard is ready. And it's because I've been out there. I hired chicken to work with me a couple of days. And then me and Rachel have been out there cutting and clipping and cutting and clipping and getting things ready. And everything looks amazing. My roses all popped and they look amazing. Uh, my, Is that uh, a sentence my you thought azalea. you would ever say 20 years ago? If I said, no, Jerry but, Wayne, you will utter with a smile, my roses just popped. And, and they, you will mean it. They're beautiful. That's they look what I amazing, mean. man. And your face is sincerely <laughs> happy. Yeah, my house looks like a this fairy tale gonna right frolic. now. He's going to frolic. I've got loquats. He's I'm frolic. growing loquats. Hey, what, what, what machine works those out? <laughs> Smith machine still. That's now you get a Wilson machine. <laughs> my point was, going up north, I mean, a much, it, it's it's majorly white, but it's a very mixed gym. North where? Uh, Cypress. Uh, that's that north. That's white people land. That's yes, exactly, <laughs> and that's the problem. That's where Jesse Payton lives. That's for the problem. Sakes. <laughs> white people, white it's people the go to the gym in pairs, in and white people will come up and talk to you. Whatever, <laughs> bro. Planet Fitness on Fondren, gym full of black folks. Not one word spoken ever. Black people walk into the gym. They do business. They walk the fuck out. I, like I never. I saw guys in there every fucking day. Uh, I never knew anybody's name. No one spoke. Head nods all around. Nothing. It's all. Even if like, hey man, are you done with that machine? It's like, yeah, yeah, all the it's time. Yeah, hand checks, right. hand signals. Yeah, black dudes in gyms don't say a motherfucking word. That's the way. And I, they all go alone. So I will tell you this: uh, when I go, so there's two of them that I go to. One of them is off uh, like Cross Timbers and Shepherd, uh-huh. but it's kind of on the edge of the heights. Mm-hmm. So there's more white people that come to that one. But also a tremendous Latino population yeah. there yeah. and tremendous black folks population. Then, That's a good crossroads. Uh, the other one I go to is at 59 in East Mount Houston. And I am the white dude that goes to that gym. <laughs> and, now, and, is it all Latino or is it all black? It's a mix. Oh, okay. It's about half, half. Because, uh, you know, uh, that part of Humble up 59 is like heavy black population. And it historically has been. It's like that's where all the that's – where, that's where you see all the black dudes riding horses and uh, wearing yeah, cowboy yeah, yeah. hats going down the side of the road and stuff. Now, Latinos That's where gym? I buy my firewood. I buy my firewood. I found a compound. This is the wildest thing. And this is right off 59. I'm not going to tell you all the exit. <laughs> okay. But right off 59, right before you get to East Mountain Houston, there's a little road right off the feeder. And you go down this road for I know the road. about two miles, and it's all logistics and trucking companies uh-huh. on both sides, big fences. Uh-huh. And then you get back there, and the road takes an L to the left. And you pull off, and there's – on this property that you can see, there's five to seven trailer houses – two to three very old 1940s homes that were built pier and beam homes and there was a family of people that ranged from very old hillbilly white like tennessee hillbilly uh-huh to uh very young latino oh and it's a group of it's a commune of people living on this property and they sell firewood and wood for all kinds of things and they have all the kinds that you want they have pecan they got oak they got the red oak they got Pine. spruce they got everything you want that's Pine. barbecue wood baby you, yeah they, you got post oak they got post oak they got water oak even if you want to use water oak they got water oak they got this, all this the, the wood compounds bro they got sycamore if you just want to burn sycamore wood they well, got everything you need there what if i wanted a good mahogany yeah, they probably don't have a lot of that because they're we not don't grow Amish. a lot of that down there. Well, it just doesn't grow here. Wait, this compound, they're growing all of this. Yeah, it's a huge piece of land. Oh, they're not off, bringing this Right in. off 59. They're just cutting down this land they have and uh, sourcing these trees, resourcing these trees. So they got like their Johnny Appleseed in it and keep they've it going? Got, they've got uh, big equipment out there. They got chainsaws. There's I've I seen like eight Latino kids with chainsaws. Where do they find, where do the people who live there come from? 
that. Did they recruit? They all, all came from Waco family. when the Corrections <laughs> Compound got burned Something, down. it's... It all seems to be – it's very familial, the whole relationships and the way everybody right. – Yeah, when you got ten wives, you got a lot of kids. Can you yeah. get – can you marry into a cult or yeah, a compound? Yeah, I think you could marry into this one pretty easily. Like, But do the do the girls come out and the guys go out like into the real world? Or no, do they all I think live? you marry in and you go pick out which trailer house you like and figure out what type of chainsaw you like using. Right, but how do you, <laughs> how do you, how do you meet them? That's my point. I think you got to go to the compound because uh, so, so they had a lot of young – they had – uh, there was children of all ages. So you show up looking for firewood and just act interested? I yeah. Guess. I mean, like, just pay them maybe tip, he- me. Com. tip heavy for the pecan. You know, I don't know. I just, but I went in there. I like pecan in my smoker. I like pecan. Yes, hickory. sir. And uh, so, but I, it's hard to source pecan when we live pronounce. in the place where all the pecan grows. Pecan. Yeah. No, that's not it. It's pecan. But, it is. Uh, it pecan. Is. Pe- there ain't no, no. you. In fucking pecan. Oh, we've talked about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> there's still any you in it since we talked about it. There's also not another E. <laughs> At least you, you, pron- you pronounce the A right. That's, that part's good. <laughs> it's a pecan, a short A, you know? <laughs> this is the way the language works, bro. <laughs> okay. but the short point, the, vowel follows a long vowel. It's That's, pecan. This is how math works. <laughs> Pythagoras said... <laughs> That's what I'm to- when Pythagoras <laughs> laid it all out, he said a short vowel follows a long vowel. I he was good at math. I, if I, if I would believe this if I didn't know that you had a mechanism for pronouncing words and it didn't involve math. <laughs> <laughs> I know you just pick the same syllable on every word and emphasize it or whatever it is you do. <laughs> but I just, I just looked on Facebook Marketplace. I was looking for pecan, and this guy had some. And I went over there, and I bought a trunk load of pecan for like 10 bucks. A trunk load of pecan There's for like no that shit is not There's cheap. No, way no I've been it. smoking meat on it. So my wife goes to H E B on Thursdays, and they do these special meat deals on Thursdays. And so it's like, oh, if you buy ham, you get this, this, and this. And so she's been buying all those. And I've been filling up the freezer out in the garage with it, and we've been just smoking meat for like months now because I've been buying all this pecan. Off Coltwood. Off the Coltwood, yeah, it's so good though. That's it's the best tasting pecan. That's now, the na- that's the road you should see in the neighborhoods when they're like Edgewood, Fieldwood, Coltwood would be a good one. Yeah, for the I seeds. would. F- I got a question for you now. Now, when you smoke, uh, do you switch up the wood depending on what type of meat you're smoking? Yeah, and depending on the dish. Uh, so, like, I've been doing a lot of uh, pork shoulders, or mm-hmm. what a lot and of people call a Boston butt. On my pork shoulder, I use about 80% hickory with about like 20, 30% apple or peach wood, whatever okay. I can get. I don't, I don't, one, I don't, I, I don't feel like think I just walked into a chemistry lab and no one told me there was a quiz. Y'all carry on with your 80%. Yeah, some people are like him. They don't mix woods at all. I, I mix woods. Well, a it's, bit. It, uh, that's uh, miscegenation. Unless, <laughs> unless, <laughs> I won't stand for it. Unless I'm doing brisket, uh, because on brisket, I like to use mesquite and mesquite burns so fast and you'll spend $100 oh. on wood. Uh, so I will mix oak and mesquite because oak is universal. I and may I still never get... forgive you for saying that sentence. What's that? That I like using mesquite. Weed is for smoking in your mouth, not on the meat. Oh, <laughs> that, that skunkiness and beef I'm is fucking. Right back in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> mesquite is not Hang a tree; that, it's a bush. That's, you know, that, you that, skunk, that skunkiness and mesquite is fucking amazing. Oh, I do so believe I, that y'all are gonna have to both smoke a pork butt and bring it to me for testing. <laughs> <laughs> and it is brisket only. Uh, fruit woods are for pork butts. Uh, I, will, I will only use. I fruit like woods. fruit woods on pork. Yes. Well, not ribs, ribs though. So, no. So for ribs, I'm a, that's that's my pecan. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, brisket is either going to be a mixture of mesquite and oak, or I use hickory, and I'll also use hickory for pork butts. I use hickory for ribs too. Hickory I use on everything. Uh, yeah, I do much. pecan and oak for brisket. Okay, yeah. So I mean, the thing is, because I like because, that caramely. And and the thing is, oak la- or oak burns for so long, and brisket takes so long to cook mm-hmm. that if you try to go just one wood on that, you're going to spend 150 bucks on wood. Oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I use like so two you got sticks it. of pecan, one stick of oak, and then the oak will carry it through the plateau. Yep, and because do you, do you think there's an undiscovered wood out there? Like there's a wood that no one knows is good for smoking meat. Bruh! Uh, I did it. On, I did it on uh, chicken thighs. Uh, uh, uh. Like, has anybody accidentally burned like an IKEA bookshelf or something and been like, "This no, no. is the best chicken breast"? I have used the wrong wood to try to smoke wheat and been very disappointed. I did. I did. Uh, uh, there's a place, John Henry's, uh, out 45 North, but 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 going towards the airport, whatever. Uh, his whole 
shop. He just makes rubs and marinades. And uh, the motherfucker has all these crazy looking rubs and shit. And I was watching Food Network and he was on Paula Dean back in the day. So I was like, I'm going to look this motherfucker up because I'm going to buy some of his rubs. And then I looked him up and I filled an entire online cart. And then I looked at the bottom. Address was in Houston, Texas. I was like, fuck this. I'll just go up there. So I go up there. He sells smokers. He teaches classes. I mean, the dude, dude's a fucking badass, right? And I go on. This little Mexican girl's in there. Just let me taste all the different rubs and whatever. I was like, yeah, I saw y'all on Paul D and this and the other. The motherfucker's in the back office. He heard me. And he comes out, and he's like, ah, oh, so you saw me on TV. I love this dude. I see him all the time. Anytime I go and buy shit in there, which hasn't been in a long time because I haven't had access to a smoker. But he will also get woods in there. This guy's probably all dead. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he His daughter's me. watching the podcast crying right now. <laughs> My daddy. <laughs> he my sold daddy. Me. Sorry. My daddy. My, da- my daddy. They chopped down coffee trees. I've heard. And that. he yeah. sold me coffee. I've seen the coffee trees smoking. Mother. I've heard fucker. it's amazing. Um, I've not tasted it, but I've. One, it's good to the flavor. Two, your whole neighborhood will come by your house and be like, what the fuck is going on over there? Ah. Um, and then the other one he sold me, and I did it with a pork butt, was Persimmons. Yeah, and that's a that's old East Texas. That's that's rednecky shit. Yeah, well, like I, I ain't never done it. Yeah, but the coffee I did, and then I want to go back and get. But it, it ain't cheap. No, no but like <laughs> I, I've, I've seen people smoke with magnolia tree, and I, it's got a weird Ooh, that's smell to me. Weird. But I used like uh, one of those bubble trees from Yemen or something, where they own like one of those trees that only lives in one country. Mm-hmm. Like a Madagascar tree or Maybe. something? I, I cut down a red oak tree one time thinking it was a regular oak tree. Uh-huh. And I seasoned the wood. I kept it. And then I smoked it. And all my meat tasted like a number two pencil. Ooh, it was yeah. the worst thing I've ever done. It was so bad. Red oak <laughs> doesn't have red oak in the good. Red oak. I didn't, there's people that smoke with red oak. But the, my experience with it was awful. I I also use pecan. and uh, So, like, I told you, fruit woods for pork. Uh, if I'm ever smoking a turkey, it's always going to be a nutwood, usually pecan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, do a pork butt with peach wood. Yeah, so I, I, I like to, I like peach it's on pork. The absolute a lot. best. So, I go back and forth between peach and apple. I don't. Apple's uh, good. But peach I don't get into the post oak thing. That's like a Houston thing. Everybody loves post oak here, and they smoke with post oak. No, and it, they love post oak because it's cheap. One yeah. log will burn for three fucking days. Anybody That's, tried I, smoking I with grapevines? No, but I've got them. God, I've been fighting them in my property so bad. They yeah. are everywhere. I have. I've try it. I've cut them from the ground up, and uh, dude, I cut one. Will they grow? A uh, uh, chicken cut one. We found one that was this big around, growing out of the ground like a tree, and it had been left unchecked for so long. And chicken cut it, and eight days, it started dripping water out of it. Farmers hate those plants. They call them uh, their water thieves because uh-huh. they soak up so much Y'all water. Y'all don't but just those... light it on fire like you did everything else? The ch- chicken, it's got too much water. Those yeah. vines will save your life, though, in the jungle. Really? Because chick- you, can, you can cut them and you can drink water out of them. Yeah, chicken drank some of the water yeah. out of it. it bro. So when you get bro, the vines that it curve started like that. foaming. It has dripped water and foam now for like two weeks. It's still dripping. That's all starches. <laughs> it like it's the wildest thing, dude. Yeah. This thing is so mad we cut it. Cauterize <laughs> it. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, right. I walked out there last night and that thing is still dripping foam and water out of it. What's the biggest? So there's like I, I don't cook, so I don't understand. But I've eaten barbecue in Texas and in in, in Tennessee and in Missouri We're and all the Tennessee. places. I had it in Memphis. That don't count. Hang on. So I've, I've, I've had, I've, my point is, I've had it in all these places, and that brings me to my question, which is, what is the biggest blaspheme in barbecue? What is the thing that someone does that that you just go, that makes absolutely. Did that you is, not hear my reaction to mesquite? Okay. Yes. That's <laughs> fair. Yeah. Is, is, that, is that the big one? Is that yeah, like no. that? That's one. I just have personal ones. Me personally, uh, beef starts with pecan. That's just me. If, if you don't smoke a pecan or if you don't have pecan in the mix, we're never going to see eye to eye on that. 
But I despise mesquite. I don't use mesquite in anything. I don't like the taste. I don't like it. So, and that's a lot of barbecue places in Texas are big mesquite right. places. Now, the, another thing you hear is like there's all these regional barbecue right. styles, and there's these big arguments. Everybody's like, oh, Texas can't do anything but beef. I smoke pork all day long. I'm damn good at it. And we don't I'm, put I'm, mustard I'm, on yeah. it either, I'm Memphis. I'm a beast on a motherfucking turkey. Yeah. I use mustard. So, that's what, what do you use for a binder? Do you use a binder at all? Mustard. Okay, so I use I mix mustard, it's a Worcestershire, or, or, however the hell Worcestershire. you say that, Worcestershire. I mix that up for my binder on my ribs so, and well, stuff. Why is some stuff so? Some stuff I've had is like must like. No, I don't like it too heavy. I like it actually so, heavy Worcestershire. Here's the thing: sauce, with a brisket, it's more smoky. With a brisket, I will rub, I will coat the whole thing in mustard. The acid in the mustard is acidic enough to where it's a natural tenderizer, but it's not so acidic that it'll start cooking and like like something with, with ceviche. And you don't taste it. You don't okay, taste okay. it. Okay. So the thing is, I've if you it. if yeah, you rub the right. whole thing, well, that's they probably did it right before they threw it on. If you rub the whole thing the night before, and then you throw on your uh, you throw on your rub, it binds to the rub, and then the next day when you pull it out of the fridge the mustard layer is like this thin and the second you put some heat on it that shit's it's gone because okay. the meat has the meat has soaked in the acid all of the yeah. acid already and the only thing left on there is just the crust and that is what's holding your rib to it that's going to leave your crust from when you're finally done with the smoking yeah now you ask cardinal sin um i know a lot of, first of all fuck a pellet smoker um yeah i, I don't take that i don't i don't take it. yeah <laughs> Hey man, hey man! I just I just bought a new fucking pellet smoker. I'm amazed you can say it with all the semen in your mouth. Um, <laughs> and uh, what are those pellets made out of? Horse hooves, <laughs> glue? Rabbit shit? I don't know. I don't, know. Uh, I don't trust fake made wood. Fuck, fuck your pellet. I can't not, furniture. If there's not it's bark the, on it, it's I'm it, not using it's it MDF. To cook my food. Thank you. Um, now the the thing that I get is is because some people will, they'll they'll go out and they'll smoke for a couple hours and then bring the shit in and stick it in the oven at a temp for a while, and uh, bro, if I walk in your house, if I see a jar of liquid smoke anywhere in your house, yeah, 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 yeah. No, oh, fuck yourself. I've seen I people won't. use the oven as a crutch on the back end. I ain't got a problem with that. If you use the oven as a crutch on the back end once you've wrapped the meat. And you're not trying to get smoke into so, it anymore? Because it only takes smoke for about three hours. And yeah, after that, I, I, you're smoke. My rule is four. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but the thing is, if I've already lit it, even after that four hours of where it's taking the smoke, as long as you don't open it, it's going to hold that temp for a while. I'm just going to leave it there and not run up my electric or gas bill. Like When it goes out, sure, I'll bring it in. And a lot of times, I will smoke the day before. And so I got no problem with go ahead, wrap that in, put this shit to 225 and stick it in the oven. And then when people come over the deck next day, it's there. You know, I, th- at that point, I'm just holding it at a temperature. I'm talking to motherfuckers who cook in the oven. Yeah. And then I made ribs. How do you feel about sous vide? Oh, I have a cooker and sous vide is fucking God's gift from heaven. For uh, barbecue? Uh, no, not barbecue. Yeah. I don't trust sous vide barbecue. <laughs> what? Rest in peace, Scotty what? Peterson. I love you, but some of that sous vide shit was garbage. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was, I was, was barbecue sous vide. No, but Scotty sous-vide, was for a while. He was experimenting uh, with uh, some different things. There's a lot of guys that do it. Actually, it a makes a good steak. Restaurant makes a great steak. It makes a lot well, of great it things. Makes, it makes a great steak. But you if, can't. You've got to cook it afterwards. Yes, you have to. You have to sear it afterwards. And yeah, I do is, a reverse you sear. Can do it, you can do it in. A, you can do it in a uh, skillet. But the best thing to do is get one of those torches and a sears all and you just know. bam hit that motherfucker. The best thing ever though is fucking chicken breast. Uh, you can make a chicken breast in there, and it takes like literally twenty seconds to side when it's done. Dude, it's so it's so soft on the inside. It's like bug, bubble gum. Mm-hmm. And my big thing because my sous vide cooker is not the kind of the snowco. No, sadly. My sous vide cooker's out out in L.A. The the cool thing about sous vide cooking is you can pop the shit in the bag. You can vacuum seal it, right? I will will season up a chicken breast. I usually put, like, a little little dab of butter in there. And then you can vacuum seal it, and you can throw that bitch in the freezer. And where normally you sous vide a, a, a breast for two hours, you can drop it in the water. You just double the time, and you can cook from frozen because it only cooks to a certain temperature and never goes over, right? But the cool thing about it is, especially like, because do you have one? Do you have an emergency? No, no, I don't do it. He doesn't believe in it. So the best thing about it is, is if you're trying to diet, you're trying to work out, whatever, you can wake up in the morning and because a, a frozen chicken breast will take you four hours. 
You can dunk that motherfucker, set the timer. You can eat breakfast. You can check your emails, do your thing, whatever. You can go to the gym. By the time you get out of the gym, when you come out, beep, 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 it's ready. And the other thing is, if you're if it gets ready and you're still at the gym, because that, that thing holds that water, that you, you won't burn it. You won't overcook it. It'll never cook past that point. And it also won't turn off until you turn it off. So you can get out and be like, oh, it was ready at noon, but I need to go to Sam's Club. I need to go do this. I need to go do that. You can just leave it in there running. And the one that I got is the... Uh, you could just leave a chicken cooking for like 12 hours? I heard nope. this Once exact... Once it gets to a certain temperature, it doesn't cook anymore. Yeah. And, and I heard thing- this exact same pitch for a pellet smoker the other day. <laughs> <laughs> you can just time it going like <laughs> It's, you just you put your, and he was gargling while he told me. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> you but can leave me. it in there while you go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, uh, I bought the Anova Precision Cooker, and it has a fucking app Wait, to where you can pair it. It's called the Anova Precision Cooker. It has an app you can pair it to your phone. Oh, so good. if I'm out, You're when really my shit hits the it. right temperature. It tells me, and when my timer's up, it tells me, and it asks me, do because so like okay. Didn't we used to throw dead animals on campfires and just fucking wait? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but then you gotta sit there and watch that shit uh, like a man. But no, <laughs> like so, a goddamn I man. Still, I still, this is how I spoke. I go out there, I get my fire going. I'm very particular about setting up my fire and get my fire just the way I want it for the temperature I want, and then I start drinking and I wait. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all gonna make me start about cooking. every hour I go throw a piece of wood on the fire or whatever I need to do, maybe torch it a little bit, get some flames going. But if I've got a chicken breast cooking at like one thirty seven one of those gay right? bags. When it hits the four hour mark, if my shit goes off, right, I can drop I can go boop 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 and drop it down to like yeah, one twenty, yeah. one ten, and I can just leave it sitting in there at one ten. And now it's just sitting in there warming. It's just it's just staying warm. So when I get home it's ready. I yeah, yeah, till, I, I can see the appeal behind it. I can't I, wait till three years from now, we have the same conversation. You're like, now just go to the app on my phone, and the robot arm just reaches in and picks it up and takes it to the car and drives it to wherever I'm at and serves it to me on a platter. because right. that's well, My how. robot arm just picks up shit and shoves it right up my ass <laughs> and says, wait a minute. wait <laughs> <laughs> Sprays a flavor sample in my mouth. <laughs> <Sprays> <laughs> Have you but, seen that water you can buy now that it has a I thing can't that you smell it. it while you drink the water yeah. and it makes your water taste like cherry coke? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. It's a flavor. It's a, a nasal, uh, what do you call it? Old, old, old factory, old factory yeah. system. Now, fuck that. Odiferous arrangement. That makes you, it doesn't put any flavoring in the water. It just convinces your, your body you're drinking flavored water. It's like total recall for your yeah. tongue. It's a top you put on your drink that makes your drink taste like cherry coke even though it's Dasani. Here's my thing. I like water. <laughs> I don't I want too. if I uh, wanted to taste like something else, I'll buy the something else. Bro, I had some Oh my god. I had Kool-Aid like when we were kids, right? So I took my family, we were leaving the hotel, we were looking for some food. I said I want some good home southern cooker and there's this place called Fat Boys with 3 Z's. Ooh. And so I was like, ooh, I looked up the reviews. Everybody's like, oh, it's really good food. I was Symbolic like, cool. Symbolic of the sleep you're going to want when you leave. I went in there, and um, there was a white dude with a group of service workers, and uh, there was one really old white couple, and then everybody else was black folks okay. that were running ooh. the restaurant. And uh, yeah, be blues, scared for a minute. blues music was playing, and uh, we were just like... I, but we smelled the food. I was, I was like, sit the kids down. Let's go. And they, they had a line, bro. They had nine different types of chicken and fried pork chops on the line. And the line, I fed my whole family for $42. And, and where is this? It was in Longview, Texas. But the lady said, all we have for kids drinks is lemonade and Kool-Aid. And Judy goes, I'll try the Kool-Aid. I was like, ooh, rookie. <laughs> you don't know what you're about to get into. <laughs> We've never even let you have that much sugar in your whole life. <laughs> and uh, just go out with a big old styrofoam cup full of the reddest Kool-Aid you ever yeah, seen Yeah, Black Lives Kool-Aid is tar, bro. I made a rookie mistake. I asked for the sweet tea. Bro, I almost had a diabetic. I thought my foot fell off when I drank that sweet tea. Oh, my God. Yeah, I told Judy, I said, how's that Kool-Aid? Judy had already drank one glass and was getting another glass. And I was like, let me try a little bit. Oh, God. Like, 
It was viscous. It's only you know what I mean? Dollars. Sparkle Burger. Yeah. Sparkle yeah. Burger. They 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 had a buck. They, they sell you thirty two ounce cup of for a buck fifty. Yeah. It was it was like the viscosity of transmission fluid. Yes. Yes, it sir. was uh, it's, it yes, was sir. syrup. Pu- yeah, <laughs> it's it's what you would put in a hummingbird feeder. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you cook it by. Do you, you know the recipe is yeah, for yeah. one packet of Kool Aid? Yeah. So like it's fifty percent actual sugar, right? No, 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 no. The the the, the packet is just the powder. Uh-huh. The recipe tells you to mix that with half a gallon of water and one cup. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what you're supposed yes. to throw in there. Black folks, we that's the only time we follow directions. <laughs> and all of it. Black black people Kool Aid it is is it's sugar. It's red tar well, heroin. I, I, I grew up with poor hillbilly kool-aid and it's very similar <laughs> they, it's they, yeah, uh, just white sugar and a little bit of something for color yeah and it, whatever's in that packet bro, bro, like, that oh, stuff was black thick. people are prone to diabetes no we're not yeah. we're prone my, to kool-aid kool-aid my god it's some of the best fried chicken ever had in my life and it's only 42 dollars you put the other 58 towards that surgery <laughs> yeah i don't care i uh i enjoyed it was uh amazing I did, in fact i couldn't the mac and cheese defeated me what I, you I, my stomach's smaller now it's shrunk or something because i'm eating less so uh-huh. i can't just sit down there and gorge like i used to i used to put some food down but i they had this thing called baked potato casserole i'd never had in my life but it was incredible and uh i ate the baked potato casserole and the chicken and i got the bag of cheese i was like i'm defeated i was like can i have this go and i took it i took it home and i ate it last night with a uh, pork loin I smoked a pork loin last night on my binder last night on the pork loin. Why so is I no decided, one bringing this to the podcast. Why I decided it, to. It, it, it don't. It I don't haven't done a bacon wrapped one in a while, but I decided to do a bacon wrap. I had two of the pork loins Rachel got on special, but for the binder I used uh, mustard, Worcestershire, but I also used uh, some cherry juice from my Amarino cherries that I would like to put in my Manhattans. It's like real thick, dark cherry juice. Oh, wait, are these like the black ones? Uh-huh. Like the good, the uh, Luxardo? Mm. Not Luxardo. Uh, are they yeah. Luxardos? No, these are called Amarenos, okay. and they're amazing. Uh, and so I put some of that cherry juice in there, but I also put some of the Whataburger honey butter. Oh, and mix Christ. it all up and coated those tenderloins in that and then seasoned them with my War Pig, my ham grenade. It's like low sodium, doesn't have a lot of salt in it. And uh, wrapped those in bacon, smoked them for like two and a half hours over pecan. Dude, I did a pork loin. Oh. Did a pork loin. The flavor was amazing. Will you just I write did, uh, that down and put it on the <laughs> internet without a story? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Did uh, I got a pepper grinder, did coarse ground black pepper, mm. garlic powder, onion powder, and then fucking fresh rosemary. It made that shit like it looked like it was on a the, the bit of parchment paper, so it looked like I was rolling the biggest joint in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you roll a pork butt in that, and that rosemary gets on yeah. the outside, and it binds all that flavor inside. And when you put that on the smoker, it makes the hardest crunch on the outside. It's like pork chips, but they're soft in the middle. Bro, it'll kill you. Right, yeah. what, what, if y'all, what if y'all just both like do one I of these? I use rosemary and thyme on my turkeys, on my birds. That was the only time. Yeah. What, if, what if y'all just do one of these each next week and you bring it, and then I just tell you which one of you is better. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? He ain't got a smoker. Oh, the... Uh, what, the if, what if, what if, what if, what if, all right. What if you just one, bring one, one here. and then <laughs> what if you come bring... Yeah, we'll fit, come on. The Whataburger honey butter. Cut that shit with apple juice, make it thinner, inject your turkey with it. Ooh, I'll try that. It'll blow your fucking brain out, homie. I'll, I'll try that. I'm It'll game. It'll blow your right. fucking brain out. Did I'm you just game. bury the lead? That's like the most important thing that's happened in this whole episode, and you just now out with it? <laughs> that's you know, game. Well, no, because we, we were talking about beef, we were talking about pork, and yeah, then when we're, he, we're he, he, brought, he brought up turkey, and I was like, oh, by the way, here's Sam the and thing. I love to cook, though, and more importantly, we love to smoke <laughs> meat. And yeah, yeah meat but is, the minute uh, he made that mesquite face, I'd have come over the top with that. Like, ah, I'm worth it. I've got I'm I've got worse. I love mesquite. No, mesquite's very <laughs> divisionary in barbecue. Yeah. There's a, it's very polarizing. That's the contrivacy. It's one of them. If you use it on anything besides beef, it will destroy whatever you're fucking Wet or dry ribs? Uh, I go both ways. Uh, um, I prefer dry, though. Dry, okay. Dry so smoked. What I would do is I would always go to uh, Sam's Club and I'll buy three racks of baby backs, and one of them will be wet. 
when I make yeah. them. I, I always I do them each differently. Uh, that that herb rub. I did that on thing of ribs once. I had that big crunch on those. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a mad scientist though when it comes to ribs. I Me like too. to uh, I experiment, man. I have yeah. fun with who it. Makes because the there's sweet... so much shit that you can yeah. do. With who? Where, I prefer. Where, where, I, my, where is the sweet, sticky barbecue sauce cover ribs? That, that's Texas, and that's uh, also uh, Kansas City and St. Louis. Right, yeah. They, like. they have, so I my, don't go my, to Memphis. My Memphis secret is as a, my secret as a Texan is my favorite barbecue style is Kansas City. Yeah. I love Kansas City ribs. I love Kansas, so, I love St. Louis Fair. Well, here's it's the thing the about sauce. Kansas. It's they use a very molasses heavy, it's very, sweet, very sauce. sweet sauce. But here's the thing about Kansas City cuz I I when I first got into cooking like I I dug deep into the history of all all this barbecue whatever. Um Texas always loves to hail ourselves as the kings of barbecue, which we rightfully should. Um but it's so funny cuz guys in Texas are always like, "We do it good down in Texas." All Texas barbecue, historically, it was all Mexican ranch hands. So Texas barbecue is fucking Mexico barbecue, period. Um, Memphis, uh, uh, their dry rib with their ribs or whatever. And then like up in the Appalachia, they, they do a lot of mustard-based sauces mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, Kansas City. When you get City, over to like North Carolina, it's all vinegar. And yeah, that's uh, all. God Georgia. All. Kansas City, their barbecue culture, the reason why it is so good is because back in the day, all the trains and all the stockyards and everything, they were in the center of the country. So everybody came from everywhere and started cooking in Kansas. So Kansas City Barbecue, they, they're they like, we have the best. It's just a mix of cultures. It's, it's so like, notice style. how little they took from Memphis and North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, I tell little. you something right there. In Georgia, they Earl. sure they really did. <laughs> they really were like, yeah, fuck you guys. Um, but yeah, Kansas City is is you you can go three different barbecue joints in Kansas City. Now the sauce is probably gonna taste the same, but there's gonna be a different 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 method of cooking in all three. Mm. There's gonna be it's all gonna be great, but they they they're basically just they're the mutt of barbecue culture in this country. Kansas City, Northern Arkansas, and Alabama. Are the places I eat barbecue outside of Texas? Now you don't asking, screw in North Carolina. Uh, well, I, I will tell you this: you get over in like Western North Carolina and like Eastern Tennessee, it's a little different. Uh, yeah. They do they do some cool stuff there. But what it, do people north do? Do they just not eat barbecue? Like north I of mean, a certain? I mean, well, do, uh, pretty sure it's illegal at some point. It's, it's, you, it's, right? it's, it's not our Mexican. You get north of Virginia. You, know, you, got, a, you got a cold climate place. I mean. They don't. You got to The South has agriculture. You know what I mean. So yeah, we've of course we've got it. Um, Californians, uh, fucking. How dumb can you be to not be able to light a fire and make good meat? Well, and I'm gonna say this as delicately as I can, but the South has been a big fan of immigrant labor for a long time. <laughs> yeah. And with immigrant labor comes good food. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, well, there's no ice fishing culture in this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I can't tell you shit about how to smoke no walleye. <laughs> but <laughs> right, I can't smoke a salmon. Uh, but, but you give me a piece of catfish, I can do some All different right, shit right. with it. You're They're probably like. going. Why don't we <laughs> smoke fish? That's yeah. we're right on. I the- asked for catfish in Wisconsin my first time in Milwaukee. Oh. I went to a fish fry and I asked them if they had. I was like, "Where's the catfish at?" And the, at first they informed me that was trash food <laughs> and they trash fish. Saying, right? And then a lot of uh, derogatory racial slurs were thrown about <laughs> about who ate the trash fish. And uh-huh. I was like, "Well, can you tell me where they're at?" Yeah, so <laughs> I can go get the catfish. <laughs> Because I'm clearly in the wrong bar. <laughs> I'm clearly in the, I ain't eating fucking white fish. That doesn't even make. That's not a real fish. Yeah, so that's what you look at him. You and go, made that up. That's what you look at him and you go, "Hey, Huck Finn was friends with that guy for a reason." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All fish is white fish when you cut it open. That's the dumbest thing. I don't trust that. That's what we're trying to tell you. At least all fish that matters, Jerry. Fucking <laughs> this. Trash. Yeah, I never heard anybody get racist about what type of fish to eat before, but that, that's yeah. what I learned in it's Milwaukee. White trash and it's funny because <laughs> but Milwaukee's yeah. one of those places where they're like so racist, even the white people are divided. Yeah. But you that's know what I mean? Though. The that's Italians the and the Irish don't live together. And up in the north, to hate. they all fucking like to talk about how we're so racist down uh-huh. in the south. There's 147 like, different languages spoken in my city every day on the reg. Well, because up in Canada, literally, Houston's uh, the most diverse language place in the country. Up in Canada, someone asked me. They were like, they were like, how do you how do you live down the south? Because aren't they really racist in the south? And I'm like, 
oh, they're racist in the North too. I'm like, the difference is, yeah. is I'm like, hey man, I can walk past a dude's house and see a Confederate flag in the house and go, oh, that dude's racist. Don't knock on his door. I go, these motherfucking Yankees will smile to my face and wait for me to walk away. Before I they... will take my racist over northern racist any day of the yeah. fucking week. Yeah, but, and you can also fix that dude. And here's what you do is you go to his house, you knock on his door, and you get and him you out there. And you serve some fucking catfish. You get him out there in the pickup truck, and you go to Kroger's, and you buy about $500 worth of meat. And then uh -huh. you pull down on the cut and say you're just looking for somebody to cook and hang out with. And by the end of that day, that dude will be a different person. Amen <laughs> to that. Why are we not shooting this video? <laughs> like, it's, a, it's, a, it's sad that it takes that, but that you could fix things like I that. I believe food brings us together. A, a, a barbecue on the cut changes a lot of stuff for people. Amen. If you, I, I've learned some things here. <laughs> um, food brings folks together. That's how I won over my Latino neighbors. <laughs> oh, bro. I'm even okay if you use the oven as a crutch on the back end. I used to <laughs> love living next to Well, we lived in the neighborhood that was all Mexican, me and my brother, and uh, the fools were cooking every day. They throw a barbecue about anything. I go walk they'll Tuesday. Just, they'll drop off they 20 pounds of fajita meat and just yeah. go, here you go. It's like what that's, the fuck? That's a, yeah, that's, you can't. That's why I, I kind of make the joke about it. But it's it's hard to starve to death in a, in a city like this. You just walk a trail, and someone's barbecuing about every five houses uh, across the street from me. Uh, there's about four Latino families living on one property. They've got uh -huh. a couple houses backed up to each other and everything. A different and, kind uh, of comp. Pretty pretty low key. Pretty cool folks, but. I mean, they, they're the ones I, I told everybody. I was like, I forgot how much gunfire was involved in Latino Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, because they, they like get their guns out and shoot them and everything. But I like get my guns out and shoot them. I blew up. I live in Houston city limits, blew nine rounds through a nine millimeter the other night in my backyard. Nobody even raised an eyebrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a, I, I like living in that environment. But yeah. these dudes would be partying. Uh, they were partying one night. Uh, I was out there smoking my meat for the next day because I was do the all night smoke, you know. And I was a couple drinks in, listening to my hillbilly music, having a good time. And I had never heard uh, Spanish techno music before. Spanish techno covers of popular songs. I I started hearing it. And I was recognizing the songs they were covering, and I was like. That's pink? Oh, that's wild as hell, bro. I ain't never heard pink in Spanish. And so I walked across the street, and I went walking over there, and I had my little my cup and my drink, and I walked up, and the guy was like, hey, man, what's up? I was like, dude, I love the music. He goes, come back here, man. I went back there. I hung out with them dudes for like two or three hours, like this three o'clock in the morning. This guy should be a, a character on Twisted Metal who drives a tow truck. <laughs> oh. That's the character you are. You uh, got a little bit of a twinkle in your eye. You're good in a rough neighborhood. You always got a plate of brisket. Or something. <laughs> they, I just can see you. They sent me home with fajitas, and it was a great time, man. I, I was drunk as hell by the time I walked across the street. <laughs> That's why whenever whenever I see on the, it's like we gotta stop all these Mexicans from coming over. I'm like, what do you eat? God. Because go to Oklahoma and fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fucking. It's like it's. I believe in seasoning, and I believe in people who believe in yeah, seasoning. That uh, is my religion. I used to always say I was all for the wall until I found out it wasn't between us and Oklahoma. That's <laughs> and, and <laughs> I believe, we're locking everybody else out. <laughs> I believe in asking my neighbor what's wrong with my car before I ask Pet Boys what's wrong with my car. <laughs> yeah, because my neighbor is a lot cheaper. Right, I need better neighbors. Um. We got to get out of here. Jerry okay. Wayne, uh, Sam Damaris, chicken. What you, you you have a message for the folks, chicken? Okay. Good, we gave him check. one opportunity to spread his gospel across the world, and you came up with, I'm going to check back in with you one more time, chicken, anything? I'm good. And good. That's <laughs> That's my for chicken. Just back. Buy a Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my dream alive before that you, company completely goes under. Have you tried oat water or what? I was, I was the way for you like, yo, my neighbor made some beef with mesquite and I pissed with that dude. <laughs> <laughs> we got to no, get out of here. Chicken's neighbor's awesome. <laughs> Trey Tutson will likely be back next month. Uh, more Whiskey Brothers around the corner. We're easy to find individually and collectively. Go watch my special. It's on my YouTube. Uh, we'll post links to all that stuff everywhere else. And come see all of us live when you get the gym. <laughs> Whiskey, and I believe in good times.